Hello there. Hi guys, Josh Lloyd here. What to watch for for Tuesday's games in the NBA. The first game we look at, the Raptors and the Magic, the Terrence Ross Bowl. We want to watch the wiki Chris Boucher, whose minutes have been significantly reduced over the last little time period. So how is he going to look? What minutes is he going to play? Is he droppable? No, but we want to watch to see how it looks because last time against the Magic, against Nikola Vucevic, it wasn't a great look for Boucher and I expect another low minutes performance. This will probably turn him into a big buy low as well. And then I want to watch Yuta Watanabe, who's playing really well in deeper leagues. He's someone to take a look at. Can he be a starting power forward in the NBA at some point in the next three or four years? Maybe that's pushing it, but man, I don't know. He's playing well. He's getting defensive stats. He's hitting threes. I'm pretty interested in what Watanabe is doing. For the Magic, we know Aaron Gordon is out. We know that he's out for the next four to six weeks. So someone's going to have to step up. Is that going to be Ken Birch? It, it appears to be. He was already playing 25 minutes a night. Now, I don't think Birch will start. It'll probably be Gary Clark. Yeah, but Birch is the guy that backs up at the four, backs up at the five, plays 25 minutes, and I want to see if he can push into 12-team league discussions. And then Cole Anthony should get more ball-handling opportunities with Gordon out. We've seen um, yeah, how he's improving his level of play at the moment, and whether that translates into being a yeah, top 100 moving forward remains to be seen. But he, a real keen eye on Cole Anthony for this game on Tuesday. Next game, it is the Jay Scrub Bowl, the Clippers and the Nets. Marcus Morris, who is being added in a lot of leagues for some reason. I have no idea what that reason is, but he's someone to watch to see whether he can at least start scoring at a decent enough level that makes us want to pay some attention. I don't think he will, but let's watch him. And then Reggie Jackson with Patrick Beverly out. Jackson is putting up 12-team league value at the moment. So um, he's a guy to watch to see if he can continue that trend. I believe that he will. And if he does that, then again, just more evidence towards the must-add 12-team league scenario. For the Nets, DeAndre Jordan, the minutes continue to go down. He is providing field goal percentage at a very high rate. He gets some boards, and he can be helpful in those areas. But yeah, his long-term value is really trash. So I want to see what he actually looks like on the court. What can he produce? Is he worth holding on to? I don't believe he is. And uh, how much they use him. And then uh, on the uh, flip side of that, my name is Jeff. Jeff Green is playing well. He shot the ball fantastically last game. He's a top 100 player over the last two weeks, and that would indicate that we do want to have him in 12-team leagues. So let's see how much they use Green. Let's see how many good looks he gets. Um, I think it's going to be quite a bit now. Of course, Harden is going to be returning for this game, so Green's opportunity probably does drop somewhat there, but he does have some interesting value at this point. Next game is the Blazers and the Wizards, the Shabazz Napier Bowl. Pretty weird that Napier is not on anyone's roster, to be honest. The Blazers, let's look at Gary Trent, who's playing a ton of minutes at the moment. He's shooting the ball well, but we know that if he does have an off night, he does struggle to produce in other areas. So can we get good Gary Trent? He does have some short-term 12-team league value. And then Nasir Little, Little has been starting with Derek Jones out. Will we get... Um, little producing anything. I'd love to see them yes, develop him uh, to some degree and play him minutes over a Carmelo Anthony who have barely played the last time out. Um, I don't expect him to be any sort of fantasy option, but Little is at least a guy that, that is worth looking at as they spent that first round pick on him last year. For the Wizards, Flaming Mo Wagner. He is the best of the centers on this team with Robin Lopez and Alex Len. But is he going to get the 25 minutes? Someone also corrected me the other day. Josh, it's not Wagner. It's Wagner. It's not Wagner at all. It's, sorry, Wagner. It's not Wagner. It's Wagner. Mo Wagner. He's German. It's Wagner. Anyway, um, I want to see how much minutes they give to Wagner and how much uh, how much value he provides. I think he could be a 12-team league pickup. And then Russ Westbrook was great against the Nets. Can he continue that form? Is he actually back? Or is that a flash in the pan, one-off performance? Can he be more judicious with his shot selection? Can he hit free throws at a rate that's more than 50%? Because all that's going to be very important for his value as we move forward. Next game, we take a look at the Solomon Hill Bowl, the Grizzlies and the Pacers, DeAnthony Melton. His value, um, if he plays 30 minutes a night, he's a must-add player. It's as simple as that. He hasn't been able to do that most of the time because Taylor Jenkins has limited him for subpar players like Dylan Brooks. But if Melton is going to play big minutes, then he's a must-add player. So let's watch how he looks, and let's see how Jenkins uses him. As for Brooks, well, he's terrible. We know that. But let's just pay attention to him. Does he 
Where do his minutes go? What does his rotation look like with Melton, with Bain, with Allen perhaps around, uh, with Conchar there? I think all those guys are better than Brooks, but let's see how much Dylan plays and how many shot attempts he gets. For the Pacers, Jeremy Lamb, who's you know, shooting at a, at a level that's very, very impressive. Can that continue? What do his minute, minutes look like? He had three blocks the last time the Pacers played as well, which is not something that we necessarily, as my dog tries to lick my face, um, we, we don't necessarily expect that every game from Lamb, but let's have a look how he goes. And then Justin Holiday, who's getting a ton of minutes. He doesn't always produce in good volume, but can he produce enough for him to be a 12-team league option for us moving forward? I think in general, we use his spot as a stream spot. We'll have more value than just holding him outright. Hello, uh, Obert. How are you? All right, let's have a look now at the next game, the Tony Bradley Bowl, the Pistons and the Jazz. Uh, Joshy Jackson started off the season well, hurt his ankle, came back, was terrible, and looks all right now. He's blocking shots at a pretty high level. We know he's going to have efficiency concerns, so he is better in a points league than in a category league. He's not quite into 12-team league discussions, but he's working his way back to that area. And he's just a name to watch to see if he can bring those defensive stats because that's where he's going to get it done, really. And then Isaiah Stewart, who's playing with a ton of hustle. I want to watch to see how he looks in terms of positioning and in terms of his defensive play, but also his offensive role and whether that means that at some point in the future, can he get more minutes? Can he get to 25 or 27 minutes a night? And does that make him a 12-team league player? For the Jazz, Jordan Clarkson, his numbers actually lately have dropped. That insane efficiency has fallen away, which was always going to happen because he was shooting at like in ridiculous numbers, like 98 from the line and yeah, 48 from three or some bullshit like that, which had no way of being able to stick. Um, if he's a 25 minute a night and the efficiency drops off, then maybe he's not a 12 team league player. So I want to see how much he plays how the shooting looks, and what numbers he's able to put up. Thank you, Obi. Uh, thanks for the good morning kiss. Uh, Joe Ingalls, who's providing good assist numbers coming off the bench. We know assists can be hard to find unless you're Timothy John McConnell, but getting assists off the waiver wire is Ingalls' speciality. Um, he always steps up when someone's hurt, whether it's Clarkson or Bogdanovich or Mitchell, and he becomes a 12-team league guy there. I want to see what he's doing uh, in his role. Can he give us six assists? Because six assists is worthy in a 12-team league. Lastly, we look at the Celtics and the Warriors. It is, of course, those of you in DFS, get ready. It's the Brad Wanamaker revenge game. Kemba Walker has struggled the last two games playing alongside Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. What can Kemba provide? We know he's going to be on a minutes limit. We know that he's going to have efficiency problems at, at points. But what's his usage look like? And what do his assist numbers look like, more importantly? And then Daniel Tice, who is the best center on this team, is starting now. Can he get 28 a night? Because if he does, that is 12-team league worthy. We don't know whether that's the case and how they're going to run that three-center rotation. For the Warriors, Kelly Oubre, who <clears throat> over the last week is back inside the top 80, which is encouraging. Can he keep that run going? Let's hope so and maintain some value the rest of this season. And then Draymond Green, can we actually get a block for, for once? Can this dude block a shot? The guy that would block you know, one and a half per game has had two in the 15 games this season, which is obviously pretty frustrating for us. Um, and yeah, he's trending towards being a droppable player at this stage. Lastly, let's look at stream options. Timothy John McConnell, a great option for assists and steals. Flaming Mo Wagner, a guy that can hit some threes, can score some points, and do it relatively efficiently. Blocks and field goal percentage, we're looking at the Rock DJ, Robbie Williams. Ken Birch and Gary Clark of the Orlando Magic filling in for Aaron Gordon. They could be guys that we look at. All right, that'll do it for me today for the What to Watch For show for Tuesday in the NBA. Don't forget to subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, but these videos, they're only on YouTube. So hit the like down below, hit the bell for notifications and leave your comments. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.